In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to use the flattening screen that I showed you guys how to make on the automatic. Coming up. Welcome back. Let's dive right into that tutorial. Here's the flattening screen that we did make. Let's go ahead and load this in the press and I'll show you guys how to work it. How to use the flattening screen, that is. Okay, I got my flattening screen all loaded up on the press. My weapon of choice as a lubricant for the squeegee is going to be our CCI International Coatings Plastisol Foil Adhesive. It's worked well for me in the past and we don't use a whole lot of it, so this is just going to stay inside the screen and it won't dry up, theoretically. If you guys are watching this and you're curious, and you're, <laughs> fuck me. For you guys on a manual press, check out our video here. The only difference is you will not be using silicone spray. It'll save you some money and it'll keep silicone from getting all over your shirts. We have had some issues with using a flattening screen and a silicone spray. Sometimes your print can wash out. What you'll need is to use a hard durometer squeegee. That way it can really press down on those fibers, matting them down, flattening out that print, giving you a smooth print or base to work with. In this case, we're going to do a print print flash and then we're going to use our flattening screen to flatten down those fibers, getting rid of that fibrillation. Something you have to consider is your squeegee angle. You wanna make sure that thing is just about as straight up and down as you can possibly get it. What that will do is really press those fibers down, back down into the Plastisol ink or your water-based ink. That will give you a flat surface to overprint your colors on. Okay, so our test subject is a good old Gildan 5000. You guys know how these shirts tend to be notorious for having fibrillation. So let's go ahead and do a test print and I'll show you guys how it comes out. So here's our test print. As you guys can see, there's plenty of fibrillation going on here. Now, we're gonna show you guys how this comes out using the flattening screen. Okay, we got the back of our shirt loaded up. Let's do a test print and use our flattening screen and see how well it does. Here are the results of the flattening screen. The ink is completely matted down. It's nice and smooth. Let me get you guys off the tripod and show you exactly how this looks close up. If you're on a manual press, you can go ahead and use your same screen again to do your second hit of white. For those of us on an automatic press, you will have to have a second screen just right after your flattening screen to print your white again, or you can let the press rotate around. We're going to go ahead and hit that white one more time just so you guys can see how smooth this white print ends up with the second hit. And there we go, here are the results with the second hit. It is really bright and nice and smooth. Here's the difference side by side. 
this is a shirt without using the flattening screen and here's a shirt with the flattening screen. Some tips to keep in mind is to be sure to use your flattening screen immediately after your flashing station. Otherwise, it will have, it's fine, I got them. Come here, Apollo. Otherwise, it will be too much time in between it getting to the flat. <laughs> Otherwise, it will be too much time in between your flattening screen and your flashing station for it to cool down and it will not work. Thanks for tuning in guys, I really appreciate it. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. If you're in the market for screen printing supplies or equipment, use our promo code MikeyDesigns at CatspitScreenPrintSupply.com. You'll get $5 off your screen printing supplies or equipment purchase, and it will help support our channel. Until next time, we'll see you guys later.